Hello folks, Brandon Chapman with you today. It's the Thunai video for December 27th, 2021. What a great start to the Santa Claus rally. If you're not for the Santa Claus rally, it's the seven days, five days between Christmas and New Year's and the first two trading sessions after the New Year's. Uh, this is historically a very bullish period and uh, we're off to the best start in 20 years. 78.9% uh, of the time we stage a rally this time of year. Thus, the idea of observing the Santa Claus rally. This period averages about 1.3% return, according to the Trader's Almanac. In fact, did a blog post that's available for you uh, last week on this very topic, asking the question, a year without Santa, because if we don't get the Santa Claus rally, it actually has pretty negative implications for the next year. Now, for those that are bullish, this is a great beginning of the year. Uh, ES up 1.38%. We're trading at a new high, a new all-time high, uh, breaking resistance here today, that kind of critical 4,700 level, the ascending lows, the equal highs, forming somewhat of a an ascending triangle here, about a 200-point range. You add that. Do we have the prospect here in the next several weeks of getting towards 4,900. Boy, the rate it's going, we might see that by the first part of January through the Santa Claus rally period. Now, as you consider the strength of today's rally and you put it in that kind of historical perspective, you know, what has it done? For example, the last time we had a stage this big of a rally of 1% or more was in 2000. That was a 2.4% rally, yielded about a 5.7% move in the S&P over the Santa Claus period, those seven trading days. Um, other periods, 1982, 78, 76, 74, 69, 45, 29. It just goes to show we have not actually done this very often. And again, this is the strongest start to a Santa Claus rally period in, in, since 2000. And uh, one of the strongest on record, right, uh, that we've ever seen. And generally speaking, it yields a positive return for the entire seven-day period. Uh, the only time we kind of finished, we faded, was 1976 and 1945 uh, with a 0.82% Santa Claus rally and a 0.58% Santa Claus rally uh, over over the seven day period. So again, stronger start faded. Is that what we're going to see here? I mean, you know, again, we just don't know, but man, it certainly bodes well to say we could see a very strong move in the broader market over the next number of days. And as you look at uh, other areas of the market, forward slash NQ, let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100. Not exactly an all-time high on the NQ, but we're breaking some resistance here. Um, as you look at some of the leadership, you know, obviously we're talking about some big names, NVIDIA, Microsoft, we'll take a look at here in a second. As you look at uh, forward slash RTY, we're looking at the Russell 2000, obviously coming on from a much, much weaker uh, support level down here at 2100, uh, resistance up around 20, uh, 2350. Uh, we'll see what holds. I mean, generally speaking, January, you see small caps have a history of leading, and if they do, it generally bodes well for the market. So again, how this shakes out is very meaningful as we get into January and as we proceed through next year. As we look at gold today, gold uh, finished slightly higher. Again, virtually flat on the session for the most part. Again, historically, gold does well. Bottoming in December, rallying early January, frequently outperforming the S&P. But I'll tell you, looking at today, it may call that into question. But that doesn't mean gold can't continue to rally. But if we do fade a little bit, gold might start to take on a leadership role in January. Uh, again, that kind of paints more of a bearish picture going into 2022, probably. Again, we'll see who wins out. But for today, it certainly appears to be the market bulls tend to take it. Um, as we look at oil, oil today finished. Uh, up 2.75%. Um, one of the things we've kind of talked about, energy was one of the worst performing uh, sectors. And then snap back uh, middle of last week, we're seeing that continue today, we're actually breaking resistance. And you'll notice this kind of rally consolidation phase breakout on Thursday. This is a flag breakout. Target's up here around 80. That may push us even back to 85 on the price of oil. So again, the SPR, Strategic Petroleum Reserve Release, really has not done much of anything for oil. And in fact, uh, the market for oil still remains in backwardation as future pri futures prices are falling here. What that means is it's going to drive these lower back month futures prices to the spot price. It creates bullish 
pressure. So again, very hard to bet against low right now with supplies where they're at. And again, you know, we'll see if demand falls off, but at least for now, oil prices are snapping back today up strongly at 2.74%. And as a result, when you look at the sectors, it was the leading sector today at 2.19%, followed by technology, real estate, materials, and of course, a lot of the, you know, XLU, a defensive part of the market, kind of bringing up the tail end here at only up about half a percent. As you turn your attention to interest rates, the TNX today uh, was down slightly. So again, we're not seeing a steepening of the curve, which would generally benefit financials, which got a really nice snapback last week. Last Monday, I talked about the uh, unusual option activity in XLF, we've got a very nice move out of it. We're still continuing it. But that leadership's fading as uh, as also as uh, Treasury yields, uh, sorry, TNX, as Treasury yields are starting to kind of, again, continue to go sideways here. So, again, we're not really providing that that steep yield curve picture uh, that, that would help financial stocks. We're still leading in the fact the Fed is going to taper and is going to is expected to raise rates. None of that's really changed. But for right now, we're showing a lot of exuberance. We're showing a lot of positivity in terms of the market. And as you look at some of the companies that are leading the way, NVIDIA today, NVIDIA got hit really, really early with some significant option activity. So if you're watching it on kind of an intraday basis, um, you'll notice if we go just to a one day, one minute, you know, it's right off the bat, we saw a lot of strength come in and it's some follow through and again, more follow through throughout the day as we saw a flurry of, of option activity on the front week expiration, the 31 December, really pointing to the end of the week here. Look at the volume here on the 310, for example. Um, at this age, over 76,000 contracts traded. And as the price began to move, it just began to filter out to higher and higher strike prices. So again, a lot of optimism, a lot of push right off the bat as these options were actively traded right off of the open. And again, you had a one day, one minute here, kind of see where all that activity came in right here. What, just a little bit after 780 to about eight o'clock because we saw the rally right here really pushing NVIDIA. Again, Microsoft is another one. Again, these are stocks to watch this week that may have a real significant opportunity to rally if this interest does continue. And notice with Microsoft, initially slightly out of the money, but that 340, 30,000 contracts traded against 8,700. Just showing a lot of activity for the most part in Microsoft. And a lot of that really kicked off, again, just right off the open. Um, this morning in Microsoft, you'll see here around, around the same kind of time frame here, right? Um, 745 to 8 o'clock. You'll see as we kind of saw this rally in here. Oops, just got to slide over a little bit here. Ah, we're, oh, I'll have to back it out. Sorry, we're there we go. Around this kind of 745 to 8 o'clock, you can see the buying activity coming really, really strongly there. And again, you'll see that activity right off the open. The second tranche began to come in about 7.45. Got to slide my charts. But again, you'll see similar dynamics in AMD as well. So Microsoft, NVIDIA, AMD, all up really strongly today. Of course, Facebook did really well. As you look at uh, um, up here, the sectors, XLC, you know, communications, you know, again, Facebook kind of booing up that space as well. So again, just some names as we look forward here. Expect to see continued strength in, in gold. It may end up lagging the S&P. Oil, again, probably not a great bet on oil, but as you look at some of the top performing stocks today, you definitely do see a lot of strength in energy stocks like, for example, um, Econico Phillips here in the energy space, one of the better performing, catching some support, maybe some potential move to 75.50, maybe even back to 78. Again, as you continue to go through this, you'll see a lot of, you know, mixture of various companies in this. But again, um, Exxon today as well, XOM uh, performed pretty well, up about 1.43%. But again, energy names are ones you could look at, maybe playing catch up here as oil starts to push towards 80, 85. But again, a lot of technology names in the space. And again, just points to the fact that again, these were the two best energy and technology were the two best performing sectors today. Um, a couple of stocks are experiencing some unusual option activity. Uh, U.S. Steel, I thought, was interesting. Again, this is a materials play. It was about 2.4%, which isn't extraordinary. But 
we're kind of trading in this kind of range over the last several weeks, a rectangle pattern. So we have a class we posted last week that I did, three-hour class on price patterns, uh, incorporating trend and other factors. Again, we're looking at a potential reversal here. Um, today on X, it was the Jan 26, which is up here. So again, we bottom, we break out tomorrow with some volume. Again, looking at 26, probably likely rolling towards 27 here in the near term on US, US Steel. And again, in this case, it was a January expiration uh, at the $26 strike price. Uh, sorry, I think it was the Jan 7. Yeah, the Jan 7, $26 strike price, 8,000 contracts traded. And uh, largely, largely on one print, as you look at the time of sales down here, 4,000 contracts traded at that strike price. Uh, another stock, Macy's. Stock didn't move a ton today. Uh, again, it wasn't a huge leader per se, up 2.6%, which is still a lot, right? I'm like, it's it's high up on that list, but it's very, very oversold. And yeah, you might look at this rally and say, ah, but yeah, this thing might roll over relatively quickly. There was some bullish interest coming in today in Macy's for the 31 December. So we're talking about this week. Maybe we have a chance here. You know, it's 11,000 contracts traded at the 27 50 strike uh, in uh, in Nvidia. Sorry, in uh, Macy's. So maybe we got a shot of pushing towards 27 and a half. That's a little almost two dollars away from the current price this week, uh, going into the December 31st expiration. Also a little bit of filtering through at the uh, 25 strike down as well, kind of roll close and rolling out. All right. Uh, finally, we're going to hit. Uh, we got two more. We're going to look take a look at uh, RBLX, so Roblox. You know, you think about Meta, the strength in Facebook today. Roblox was up three percent. It was a 31 December expiration out here at the 110 strike price to one and one. Sorry, 110 and 115. So again, pointing to some upside here in Roblox uh, heading into the end of the week. So one to watch. Again, maybe the possibility 115, is that likely? Again, probably not given the amount of distance here. But again, we've already broke the high of the gap day. We've closed the gap uh, on a closing basis today. Would it be unusual to see this roll back to 115? Would not necessarily be an extraordinary move. And finally, we're going to wrap things up with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin today uh, was up slightly. We're kind of basing down here. Uh, but there was a big trade on Bitto. So uh, so uh, our our, you know, our Co-founder Don Kaufman spent a bit of time talking about BITO, how it's structured against the futures this morning, and and why there might be a bearish bias to bit to Bitto over the longer term. That has to do with the contango. Uh, but today, Bitto, fifteen thousand contracts. Uh, I forgot. I forgot how much I finished out. But let's go here to March expiration, for example. Um, 16,000 contracts now on the 18 March 22, the 45 strike price. Now that's out there a little bit. That's 81 days, but it's really pointing to some of the potential here. Expectations 45 is way up here. So I just wouldn't take that as saying, hey, it's going to go there on a definitive basis, but it's reflective of some significant money being pl plunked down here, expecting Bitcoin uh, to do well going into March, which that's when the Fed's going to wrap up their taper program of, of buying, uh, you know, treasury bonds, mortgage-backed securities, et cetera. But, uh, but again, you know, maybe some strength here going into the first part of next year, something to watch for in BITO. But remember, the product's still based on the Bitcoin futures. And when you look at forward slash BTC, um, you'll see a much steeper structure here, which means that prices over time will gravitate towards the spot. There's a little bit of downward pressure here. And again, so a bigger picture, there might be more pressure on BitTo, but in the near term, some bullish expectations being built in. Anyway, folks, this is all the time I got. Uh, it's Monday's video. I'll see you back next week uh, for another Theo Night video. You have a good one. Thank you.